Good morning, St. Mary's. We have finally made it. I don't know about you, but the Sunday before Christmas, presuming that Sunday wasn't Christmas, was always like the, all right, we finally got here. This is where it starts to ramp up. This is where the enthusiasm and the excitement for Christmas really, really gets going. And that is because it's the natural end of the journey. Just over my shoulder here is the Advent wreath, and the Advent wreath represents the journey that Advent takes us on. That we start in hope that things, as bad as they are, can't stay that way. That something positive is yet coming. And it moves us then to peace. Peace inside and hope for peace in the world. Which, of course, then moves us to joy. That if we are hoping for a peaceful world, that that brings us to a place of joy. And then ultimately come to this Sunday, which is all about love. Love for ourselves, love for God, love for the community in which we find ourselves, love for the journey that we have been on. And so I pray however you are gathering today on this special Sunday as we observe lessons and carols, as we gather to tell the story of Christmas, we pray that your heart is filled with love for those you gather with, for those you would gather with, for this place that we call St. Mary's. We pray that your heart is filled with love this morning as we begin our worship. And so before we dive into worship, though, just want to let you know that this morning's service is going to be a little different, um, that, um, and I want to walk you through everything so that you can follow along as makes the most sense for you, and hopefully not get too distracted by the tech that we need to manipulate a little bit today. And so everything that usually comes after the sermon is going to be moved to the front of the service, and so if you're like, well, why are we already praying for our loved ones? That's because we're moving it all to the front. Also, I made a mistake in the bulletin. Um, The Lord's Prayer is actually not going to be done right after the pastoral prayer. We'll do it a little bit later. That was on me. I failed to make that change. Um, But we will be doing the Lord's Prayer and invite you to join in when we get to that point. Um, And then also, I just want to give you a heads up that, again, we are going to be manipulating between live and recorded for our lessons and carols. And so that's going to require me to be doing some work with the computer. And so if you're catching my face a lot, um, I pray that you don't find that too distracting. Um, here's Here's what you ought to do. You ought to close your eyes, look real contemplative, and then when you hear the music playing, open them back up and everything will be good to go. Um... But I hope that you can follow along today because we have a ton of volunteers um, who have done a remarkable job putting together um, an opportunity to tell the story through word and through music. And we're grateful for everyone that has participated in that. So we invite you to gather your hearts, bring yourself fully into the place where you are as we prepare for worship this morning.
Let us pray. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the midst of darkness, God brings a new light. Thanks be to the God of light. In the midst of confusion and fear, God brings hope and peace. Thanks be to the God of peace. In the midst of strife and stress, God comforts and soothes us. Let us praise God who truly loves us and brings us a new life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Friends, today we set out to tell the story, and so we invite you to sing together that great hymn that invites us to do just that. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Friends, we come before our God to raise up our request, which of course is why we worship, not necessarily to make requests, but rather to say that in the presence of God we are needy, we are in need of God's presence. And then of course when we are in worship we are reminded of God's, God is that God is always present to us. And so in prayer not only do we lift up those who need our prayers, but we also are reassured that God is present with us. And today I would like to use for our pastoral prayer a prayer that is inspired by what is the traditional reading for today, which of course is the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, as she discovers that she, she is pregnant with this baby. And so today our, our prayer is going to be inspired by that, by her example of faithfulness and fidelity to God. And then we'll continue on and pray for those who have been added to our prayer list this week. And I'd like to make those announcements this morning, and we have had a, quite, a, quite a long week um, and we begin with the family of Bonnie, Ink, uh, Bonnie Dutterer Inkman, who passed away this week um, in, a, in a fatal car accident. And our heart breaks um, for the Inkman family as they mourn her passing. And so we lift them up and invite you to be in prayer with them as well. 
We have a couple of COVID scares around those around our loved ones. Um, we pray for Carol Kinn, um, who is suffering from COVID and has severe symptoms. Um, we also pray for John Cunningham, who there was some concern about COVID. It seems that he doesn't has it, doesn't have it, but has come home from the hospital and is recovering from pneumonia. We invite each of you to be in prayer for our sister, Artis Tully. Um, Artis is just struggling with some health concerns, um, and, uh, and quarantine is, is finally getting old for Artis in so many ways, and so we invite you to pray for her. We were asked to pray um, for the Ludlow family, particularly um, their fathers, um, Richard Lindsay, who has been diagnosed with a rather, um, rather aggressive form of cancer in his jaw that will require surgery in the new year, and then Bruce Ludlow, um, who three days later was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And so um, as they prep for surgery and for treatment, we invite you to be in prayer um, for Dick and for Bruce. And then finally, we were asked to pray um, for a friend of ours at the Lutheran Church, um, Bob Scott, um, who had this week an emergency aortic dissection. Um, he needed to be flown to Hopkins. Um, and so as, as of right now, things are going pretty well, but any surgery in and around the heart and the aorta um, is very, very serious. Um, they also have three children, two in college, um, and then they also have, um, and the children are struggling um, to, to, to process all of this. And so we invite you to be in prayer for Bob Scott. And so we will pray for those families today as we pray together for one another. Let us pray. Our souls magnify the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior, for he looks with favor upon us and sees us as God's beloved children. In the tradition of Mary and all who have said yes to God, we come this morning to add our assent to theirs. Like Mary, we feel overwhelmed. We wonder if we are worthy or capable of following the calling. Like Mary, we have our questions and we will not be afraid to ask them. Like Mary, we will hear and ponder the assurance that God will empower us. Like Mary, we will strive to say, let it be with us according to your will. To whatever God is inviting of us at this time in our lives, and relying on God's grace, we say, yes. And so as we pray for faith and grace for ourselves, we pray for strength and grace for those who find themselves in need of prayer. And we name, particularly this morning, the family of Bonnie Inkman. We pray for Carol, and Carol Kinn, for John Cunningham, for Artis Tully, Richard Lindsay, Bruce Ludlow, and Bob Scott. Hear these prayers that have been made known to us this week. Hear also, God, our prayers for those who are on our prayer list. Hear also the prayer requests that we offer up in the silence of our own hearts. Hear us, O oh God, as we pray. Lord, trusting in your love and hoping in your presence, we lift up all for whom we pray this day, asking that you would bless them in the name of the one who comes and is laid in a manger and shows us the way of life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the things liturgy teaches us is that we offer things to God and God has a way of giving back. God has a way of blessing us abundantly, and indeed in this Advent season, indeed in all of 2020, yes, with all of our burdens, God continues to bless us in remarkable ways. And so one of the things we want to do is simply take all of the things that God has blessed you with, everything God has blessed this congregation with and, and our community, and offer it back to God and to simply say thanks and commit ourselves to its good use. And so however you have offered your gifts, we say thank you this day. And we invite you to join in an offertory prayer. In this one, we will read responsively. Holy One, this Advent season we wait with love, and we give with love. Love for you, our God, love for your beautiful people, 
receive these generous offerings and use them for your works of love in our world. Amen. As we prepare for our lessons and carols, we continue on this journey of Advent, and we are very grateful to have Rachel and Jules Hutchinson, who did the Advent reading for us this week. And so we'll be pulling that video up for you. We invite you to follow along. Good morning. This is Rachel and Jules, and we are here to do the fourth lighting of the Advent wreath. And today we're at the Westminster Rescue Mission, which is um, a faith-based long-term addiction, addiction recovery center in Westminster for men and women. Um, it's located on 28 acres and includes a transitional house for men that have graduated the program, um, as well as the Sparrow's Nest Food Pantry and the Mick Mission Marketplace Thrift Store. Ask anyone who has ever had a middle school crush. Love gets complicated. Complicated quick. Indeed. Even love, as it is described in our scriptures, is rarely simple. The Greeks had four different words to describe different kinds of love. One of the things... One of the things that makes Christmas so magical is that we sense. sense that a more beautiful way of love is possible. And so we embark on this yearly question. What is love and how do I find it? Advent suggests that love isn't just a warm feeling, but rather a new way of being. Relating to one another, not in fear, but with trust and affection, sharing a commitment to each other's well-being, caring for others and being cared for by others without judgment or shame. The hymnist wrote, God's law is love and his gospel is peace. The good news of the Christmas season is that a new way of peace is being born into the world and that the only law, the only things that guides our life together is love. We are never asked to consider whether someone is deserving of love. We are only asked to love. But this love is presented in a surprising way, gritty and inconsequential. Joseph is asked to take Mary as his wife, disregarding his doubt and fear to provide a home for mother and child. Mary is asked to carry a child, risking social exile. To carry out God's call, they embark on a difficult journey and give birth in a stable. The Bible's tale of love calls us to hard places where choices have to be made, risks have to be taken, and love is complicated. All who seek to live in a world defined by place, peace, peace or invited. invited to the hard and beautiful world work work of love extravagant gritty uncompromising and with every choice we make to such a love we draw closer to the vision of the one who is emmanuel god god with us okay we're gonna light our candles now it's a little breezy so you, so might, you ready so you might have to do it. You ready Can I help? Work. It's okay. I'm gonna make it nervous. I wanna try it for a second one. Hey there, lock the wind. I wanna I wanna do it. I wanna do it. I know you do. Here, you go ahead and just guide my hand. There you go. I wanna actually do it. I know. There you go. Good job. Um, no. <laughs> and we got them. Happy for Sunday in Advent. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel and Jules. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. 
With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we light the Advent wreath here in the sanctuary, we invite you to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1 through 4, for the four Sundays in Advent. Beloved in Christ, at this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all God's people, for unity and brotherhood within the church God came to build, and especially in this, our own place. And because this would rejoice God's heart, let us remember in God's name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, 
that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are one forevermore. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 9, 1 through 5 and 9. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term. But they are but the penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert and highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revered and all the people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Get, get you up to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of the good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Lesson 2 comes to us from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 4 and 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation, thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before thee as with joy at the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, thou hast broken as on the day of Midian. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, and of peace there will be no end, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. 
The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Lesson 3 comes from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in travail has brought forth, then the rest of his brethren shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by, yet in thy dark streets shine. Thank you. 
Lesson 4 is a reading from Luke 1, verses 26 through 35 and 46 through 53. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by the words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The, the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor upon the loneliness, of, the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has shattered the proud in thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones, lifted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, sent the rich away empty. The word of God.
Lesson 5 is Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first re-registration re and was taken with Quirinius and went from the town of Nazareth <clears throat> and governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea in the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and family of David, he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in a bundle of cloth and laid him in a manger because this was the place for them, in the, there was no place for them in the inn. Here ends the word of the Lord. Six comes to us from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. <clears throat> in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord.
Lesson 7 comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time this star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, Report to me so that I may too go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The word of the Lord. Lesson 8 comes from John 1, verses 1 through 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. 
What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, and the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God. Now, my friends, be people of love. Let love live in your heart and share the love of Christ with all you meet. Share love by loving those you see regularly. Start by loving your community. Share love by loving those you do not know. How do your actions affect the rest of God's creation? Share love by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share love. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share love, joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen. My friends, allow me to catch my breath for a second. So from everyone 
here to our readers who are here today, to our organist Jane and Jane, who had so much to do with putting all of this together, and to all of our instrumentalists and our, our, our vocalists, we simply want to say thank you for contributing what we had to give, much like the Magi, simply giving what we had to give in order to bless one another with this, um, with this lessons and carols. And so there will, be, there will come a time to thank each of you more appropriately, but please, for today, simply accept our thanks. And thank you for being our benediction by sharing love, joy, peace, and hope with all you meet, even if the people that you meet happen to be online. It really was a joy to be able to put all this together and to spend time with each of you as we, as we did this. And so without further ado, let's fly into a couple of announcements. Um, of course, we begin with our tech sponsorship today. We want to say thank you so much to Deborah and Jeff Miller, who sponsored our tech today in memory of Norma Boone. And it indeed is our joy to honor her memory this day. And so we say thank you to Deborah and Jeff, and we honor Norma's memory today. We also want to say thanks. Um, if you haven't noticed, um, we have all the poinsettias are up, and there are a lot of them. Um, and we simply want to say thank you to each and every one of you who ordered a poinsettia to help beautify our sanctuary during this Advent season. And here, finally, at the fourth Sunday, we have it all looking great. So we are ready to go for Christmas Eve. We also want to say thank you to Becky Rickle, who took care of our delivery costs. Thank you so much for taking care of that for us. Two pieces of business, um, and then I'll turn it over to Rob. Um, newsletter deadline. I know this is just what everybody wants to talk about on the fourth Sunday of Advent, but the deadline for the January newsletter is Wednesday, December the 23rd. That is this Wednesday. Be kind to, uh, to Lisa. Please make sure you get your stuff in so that she has plenty of time to put all that together. Um, we want to be able to get that done as quickly as possible so Lisa can celebrate her Christmas just like everybody else. So please send them over um, or call the office and be in touch with her. And then finally, um, annual reports. We're trying to put all our annual reports together and simply say all of our ministry team chairs need to submit their annual reports as soon as possible. Um, and so we appreciate there's a lot going on, but the sooner we get those, the sooner we can put it together and make sure that they are distributed. Um, the final announcement I have is just a reminder that we will be gathering via live stream. So like we're doing this morning, live stream on Facebook for Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock p.m. That service will include communion, um, and, and we'll, we'll remind you as the day gets closer. Um, but if you, if you would like elements, you're free to come to the church and get them, or you may assemble your own. Um, but we look forward um, to, a, to a peaceful service, a simple service, simply welcoming this child whom we proclaim today. So just a reminder, we'll see you on Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock. Oh, and I guess I should also say, um, I've cleared it by all the prayer folks, that um, Christmas Eve will be our last... Um, will be our last daily prayer for the week. And so for Christmas, for Saturday, and the Sunday following, um, we simply will not have daily prayer. Um, we hope that you understand just one, just one less thing to think about for a little while. And so if you tune in on Christmas morning to see daily prayer, my apologies. That doesn't mean we're not praying. just means that we won't be praying together online. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Rob. So I won't take too much time here. So first off, to everyone out there, thank you for joining us online today and every day. And whether you do it live at, this, at, the, uh, at our appointed time or later in the day, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to Sam's uh, morning prayers. Uh, during this time of year, we're certainly, as we come up on the end of December here, it's, it's a time to be reflective of the year that has been and the year that's going to be and coming up. Uh, so while there's been challenges and stuff this past year, and that's certainly an understatement, um, here at St. Mary's we have so much to be grateful for and, for and grateful for many things. And so first off, I have a couple of these things to share. So first, we are grateful to all of you for joining us online, the Sunday prayer or uh, morning prayer, um, and in other ways that you work with the church. Grateful to everyone who works on the ministry teams, our ministry chairs, our paid staff, um, we thank each and every one of you for what you do day in and day out for everything that makes us St. Mary's. We are a small but mighty crew here. And finally, um, as, we, as I point and start looking at Pastor Sam here, um, uh, certainly this has been a challenging year for him as well to go through this. And certainly in any, any, anywhere you go, your first year through there, you get to experience the first of many things and stuff. So normally here at St. Mary's, what would happen a couple of Sundays prior, as we go through the Advent season, we would be uh, doing a collection at the doors for a small token of our appreciation to you and to Jenny as well for everything you've done. And this year has been, you know, for doing their first and stuff, 
This has been a stellar experience with all of us. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts, everything that both you and Jenny have done to keep us going, to spur us on, to be our cheerleaders, and to do and to live and breathe St. Mary's. So we thank you for this year. We look forward to many, many years with you. Uh, as a small token of appreciation, uh, we took up a collection online as well. So uh, for you and for Jenny and the family, we thank you very much. Thank you very much. I didn't have to preach today. <laughs> You're making me preach today. So, um, Rob, I shake your hand and hug you um, because and live long and prosper indeed. Uh, <laughs> um, let me add um, my thanks to everyone who has, I said, ministry really hasn't been all that different. It's just six, seven, eight, diff eight more hoops that we have to jump through in order to make that happen. And so, um, and that has fallen on no one more than more than you, Rob. And so thank you for shepherding me through um, all of this. And um, and let me let me simply say um, that as I look over the last year, I mean, yeah, this isn't what I signed up for. Um, I do want in heaven a little merit badge that says I got a church through COVID. I do want that. I want to be able to wear that for all eternity. Um, but from Jenny and myself and the kids, we are so unbelievably grateful to have found ourselves here at this moment. Um, it is difficult for us to communicate just the feel in our house and the joy that we have in doing ministry. Um, it has been a remarkable, remarkable experience, and it's not what any of us would have signed up for. I, I never want to do this again, um, but to be here and to be part of your family has meant the world to us, um, and so thank you, for, thank you for honoring the work that we've tried to contribute, and that's all we've tried to do is simply to contribute to what God is already doing here. Um, and we're grateful that that seems to be appreciated, um, and I'm grateful that you all have found space for me. So thank you so much, and uh, looking for <laughs> trust me when I tell you, I'm looking forward to the next year. That'll be a heck of a lot more fun, I assure you. <laughs> and so, so to everyone, thank you so very, very much. Um, I'm going to stop preaching, and Marianne's going to start playing <laughs> so we can get out of here. Um, friends, thank you so much, as always, and uh, peace and good. Whatever your week looks like, hopefully we see you at morning prayer. Hopefully we see you at Christmas Eve, but I pray that this week is a good one for you. Peace and good, y'all.